The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. So at this time, I want to officially welcome everybody to the End Time Headlines podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Scaprell, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines. And before we get started today, don't forget to download our free official app. It is available on both Apple and Android for your convenience. It is absolutely free. We encourage you to download that app today. There, you're going to be able to keep up with all of our latest news and headlines from a prophetic perspective as well as our latest podcasts, like the one you're listening to or watching today. So we've got an interesting lineup today. I want to talk about more Frankenstein creations that are coming out of China, as well as some more uh, apostasy that's coming out of the church. Again, more Frankenstein creations, like the one that you're looking at right here on the screen. Uh, This is a headline that came out over the weekend or Probably, I believe it was the latter part of last week. We shared this on our main website, Uh, endtimeheadlines.org. What is going on with China? China seems to be the hotspot of all these Frankenstein creations. I mean, they just when you think that that they are going to let up on their latest invention, their latest endeavors, their latest creation, their latest experiment, you see stuff like this. Chinese scientists have now created what they're calling a system with the intent to care for embryos in an artificial womb. And of course, this is all going to be with the help of artificial intelligence. According to a report from Neoscope and other sources, scientists in China have developed an artificial intelligence or AI nanny that they claim could one day take care of human fetuses in a laboratory. So this is going to eliminate the need for human intervention or human caretakers. Researchers in China claim to have created a system that can now monitor and care for embryos as they grow in fetuses while growing inside an artificial womb. Let me say that again. This system will monitor and care for embryos as they grow in fetuses while growing inside a, quote, artificial womb, according to the South China Morning Post. In more details, the robotic nanny is already reportedly caring for a number of animal embryos. Experimentation on human embryos, however, is still forbidden under international law, as the newspaper points out. Well, as if that's ever stopped China, as if any kind of international laws or regulations has ever forwarded any of China's endeavors. I mean, do we really need to talk about some inventions that they've created in labs that has gone wrong, that the entire world has paid the price for? I mean, we could talk about viruses. We could talk about their latest artificial sun that they've created. All this stuff is coming out. Like China is like, I mean, it's almost as if they have signed a contract with the devil and with hell itself. And they're like, we want to be the breeding ground. We want to be ground zero for every evil, wicked and bizarre and crazy invention that we could muster up and that we could come up with and that we can create in a laboratory, we want it to be right here in China. The team published their findings in the Journal of Biomedical Engineering last month. In the paper, they detail an online monitoring system designed for the long-term culture of embryos. The system could theoretically allow parents to grow a baby in a lab. Now, that's going to be interesting when I show you another article that kind of ties in with this, thereby eliminating, quote, the need for a human to carry a child. So we don't need mothers. We don't need women. Because that's a thing in the past. That's uh, that's an old school thought. That's so last 
generation. That's so 10 years ago. That's so 2021. Beyond these claims, it remains unclear whether the system could actually bring an embryo, mouse, or otherwise to term. As it exists right now, the artificial womb is a container that grows a number of mouse embryos in a row of cubes filled with nutritious fluids, according to the report from South China, or, uh, from the South China Morning Post. The AI nanny is reportedly able to monitor the embryos, detect changes, and adjust their artificial environment accordingly. Well, that's comforting to know, right? It can even alert a technician in case an embryo develops a defect or it dies. The technology is still very much in its uh, infancy stages, but a looming population crisis in China is only serving to accelerate this development. Did you hear that? Again, this is one of the causes, the urgencies of creating such a thing is the looming population crisis because there's a, and this is not just China guys, but there's been reports that around the world we're seeing, we're seeing record numbers of, uh, of, 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 of reproduction dropping. Reproduction is dropping. It's lowering the, uh, the, and there's several factors and then I could have pulled up reports and we could have talked about that, but this is how they want to get on top of it because we got to keep the machine going. We got to keep populating the earth. It's amazing how, if I'm correct, China has a law that forbids women and uh, and parents from producing or from having so many children, but yet they're okay with creating an artificial machine, a machine, an AI machine to produce or to uh, to facilitate the creation of of of, of an embryo. Interesting. Now, why is that? Think about that, guys. How could all the other technologies that's being developed play into this, like CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, where they can genetically modify genes and DNA and basically create humans and a race that they want? Mm, does that sound familiar? Oh, that's right. Somebody else in some other administration in history was attempting to do the same thing. Now, let me show you something else. This all comes, and before we all rebuke China and get on China's back, I want to remind you that several prominent tech entrepreneurs, and we already know what those guys are capable of, and we already know what kind of crazy things that they are trying to invent. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Zuckerberg, uh, Elon Musk. Several prominent tech entrepreneurs have discussed the possibility of replacing natural birth with synthetic wombs. And here's a story straight out of science fiction, replacing human pregnancies with artificial wombs. I know the idea sounds dystopian, but it may be a fast approaching reality. Dutch scientists are working on it. Influential people are promoting it, like the co-founder of cryptocurrency Ethereum. He recently pitched synthetic wombs as a solution to the income disparities between men and women. He said they could reduce the burden of pregnancy and help women earn equally at their workplaces. Interestingly, he made the suggestion to Tesla CEO Elon Musk. Meet Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum the second best cryptocurrency after Bitcoin. The 27-year-old inventor has pitched a bold solution to end the economic disparities between men and women and also to prevent our planet from a population collapse. He wants to replace pregnant women with synthetic wombs. A proposal that has drawn the wrath of feminists. Buterin shared this techno-utopian solution in a Twitter exchange with the ultimate tech visionary Elon Musk. 
Of late, the Tesla tycoon has been expressing his concerns about an impending global population collapse. He's been sharing tweets about falling birth rates the world over, which Musk says won't leave enough people for his relocation plans to Mars. Buterin chimed in to Musk's complaints online with a controversial solution – synthetic wombs. He even shared a graph to justify his views. It pointed out how women's earnings drop significantly after a child, but for men, they remain unchanged. Synthetic wombs, according to him, can remove the high burden of pregnancy and reduce income disparities. This wild suggestion has split the internet. While some have welcomed it, the others are calling it crazy. Those in favour say they would love to have more options and prioritise their health. Some others say that it would help them escape an environment where men condition women. And yet others think that bearing child the exact same way women have forever is just deeply regressive. Those against synthetic wombs say women do not need to defy the laws of nature to be treated equally. They say pregnancy connects them to the natural world like nothing else, and that synthetic wombs would be the same as growing new species in a lab. The debate continues, but the question is, can we really make a synthetic womb? Well, we already are. Scientists in the Netherlands say, they are just 10 years away from developing an artificial womb that could save the lives of premature babies. Premature birth is said to be the biggest cause of death among newborns. Dutch researchers say that an artificial uterus could solve this problem. The technology sounds promising, but there are still ethical dilemmas to overcome. Will the technology only be used in emergency situations or will it also be available for those mulling an abortion? Will it be available for all individuals or only for those who can afford it? And above everything else, is letting machines replicate every human element of life a good idea? Aren't you glad, ladies? Listen to that. They are just trying to do you a favor. All you young women that are... Uh, are looking to have a family one day, you can look to a bright future where you don't have to worry about the burden of carrying a child for nine months of pregnancy because we're going to create a machine. We're going to create, a, we have a technology and we have some masterminds that are going to mix all this stuff up together and create an opportunity for you not have to be burdened down with carrying your child for nine months, but you can let the AI do all the work. In fact, you could probably go and get into a computer, hook up to a system, and you can type into the system, you can fill out the questionnaire, you can fill out the form, and you can create what the child is that you want to have is it a boy is it a girl what color eyes what color skin what come on what kind of this and what kind of that what kind of dna structure height weight you can create come on you can become god and create what you desire and not what god intends for you to have After Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk warned on Tuesday, the society, quote, should be much more worried about population collapse. Musk's fellow tech leaders came up with one solution for declining birth rates. I mean, aren't you glad that Elon Musk is on the forefront of solving the world's problems. I don't know about you, but don't you, aren't you able to sleep better at night knowing that he's on top of this? I mean, the guy that wants to put a microchip in your head, the guy that is creating a humanoid called Optimus, a guy now that is worried about population control, and he's going to work with some big tech entrepreneurs and probably with China, and they're going to solve the world's problems, and we're going to get more women like you back into the labor force and take the burden off of you so that we can have artificial official intelligence calling the shots on creating human beings. Now I'm going to show you in a minute scripturally 
biblically that this is nothing new under the sun, as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes. But these, these attempts by mankind to come in and get their hands in on God's creation and play God and begin to, to manipulate the order and structure of God's creation is something that was happening even way back when. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. But I, let me get back to this. Quote, we should be investing in technology that makes having kids much faster, easier, cheaper, and more accessible. Synthetic wombs is the answer. Quote, uh, now again, this was from the founder of digital product trading platform, Gumroad. Also, the co-founder of cryptocurrency, Ethereum, agreed agreed with this assertion, arguing that women would be able to continue working if the, quote, burden of pregnancy was replaced with synthetic wombs. Butrin, who has an estimated net worth of $1.46 billion, claimed that outsourcing pregnancy to machines could mean, quote, significantly reducing the inequality of wealth between genders. How did we know that somehow that would be pulled into the equation? Unbelievable. Though these entrepreneurs received support on social media, the majority of reactions were overwhelmingly negative. You think? It's not natural. Thank God that there is still a populace of the people out there that still have somewhat of a moral compass. I know it's not a lot. And I know that you're, we're digging at the bottom of the barrel now to try to find that, but at least there is some out there. Critics comparing the idea to the lab-grown humans from the Matrix. One person, said, one person went to Twitter and said, quote, this is so dystopian. Why not create a system where anyone contributing to society earns enough to build a family, buy a house, and live instead of constantly being priced out by inflation, suggested one person. One journalist said, quote, the reason the majority of people are choosing not to have kids aren't having them is not because they're lacking quick and easy synthetic wombs. It's because it increasingly feels like you need to be a millionaire to have them or perhaps they don't want to bring kids into a world that looks like it does right now. Honestly, I mean, guys, I have a, uh, a 13 year old and a six year old. If I didn't have any kids, I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. With the way the world is today, where we can't even, we don't even have the population doesn't even know what they are, who they are, where they came from. We can't say anything without everybody getting all knotted up and offended and, and canceled. The church is falling apart at the seams. They don't know what they believe in, what they stand for, if they stand for anything. I mean, honestly, would, do you want to raise children in, in this kind of environment? I'm pretty sure it's not all about money. It's also about raising children in evil, corrupt, wicked, and uh, morally declined environment and world. Even the Bible, did you know the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24, when it's talking about uh, the, the birth pangs of the tribulation, it talks about wars, rumors of wars, and it talks about the sequence of events that will happen in the end times. It, even Jesus said, woe unto those who give birth in those days. Because even, even Jesus gave us a cryptic warning in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark that it was going to be very hard times. And that it would be very troubling even for women to give birth in those times because of the evilness of mankind. And that leads me to my next point. I want to pull up 
This is in Luke 17. If you're listening today by podcast, I'm going to pull up a scripture, Luke chapter 17, verses 26 through 30. I would like you to follow along with me. Uh, For you guys that are watching this visually, you can see this and you can follow along with me. But listen, I'm going to read this to you. Jesus gives a description of what it's going to look like in the time of the end. And this is what he says, and as it was in the days of Noah, and I've underlined the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, that is underlined. Again, days of Noah, days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Again, there is what I call prophetic cryptic clues that Christ gives us of the environment and the culture that will be the same it will be a picture of and likewise in the last days at the the return of the son of man he said it's going to be as the days of noah and the days of lot now interestingly when you go and read some jewish history there is literature out there that reveals to us a little bit more in-depthly what was going on in the days of noah leading up to the flood or the great deluge, the judgment by water. In the book of Jasher, chapter 4, verses 18 through 19, in this passage, it says, it talks about there was judges and rulers that went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, listen to this, the beast of the field and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with another. In other words, gene splicing, DNA altering, genetic altering, the mixture of blood, seed, DNA. Y'all see that? And This, according to the scripture, provoked the Lord. And God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt. So again, this is one of the reasons why it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men, all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to the birds of the air, together with the cattle and beasts that are in the field, for I repent that I made them. Or in other words, he says, I regret that I even created them. Why? Because the bloodline was no longer pure. It was corrupt through these wicked experiments that men were performing. And you want to know who taught these men to do this? The angels that fell from heaven along with Lucifer. Now, how do I know that? Because again, if you go study more Jewish history, like the books of Enoch, first and second Enoch, it tells you in there in detail how the, there, was these, uh, there was these angels that revolted against God in heaven, and they pledged their allegiance to to Lucifer, who we know now and identify as Satan, the great red dragon. He's talked about in the book of Revelation. When they came down, they, according to these writings of Enoch, by the way, it is referenced by Jude in the New Testament. Jude references Enoch and it references one of his writings and one of his prophecies. Enoch describes, and he gives you details, how these angels, when they came to earth, they taught men and women all kinds of evil practices. Everything from sorcery 
to the mingling of seed, of blood, of DNA, come on, with, with animals and other creations of wicked creation. They taught men and women how to make weapons. They taught them black, black magic and sorcery and, and all kinds of enchantments and things that God deemed to be abominable. Then the angels, Genesis 6, began to go into the daughters of men. So you see there you have the birds that were corrupted, the animals, the beasts of the field that were corrupted. All these beasts and these animals were corrupted because their bloodline was corrupted. Then the angels that fell from heaven began to go into or have relations with the daughters of men and, and, and out of their wombs, hello, came demigods that were half angelic and half flesh and blood. And these were called the giants or the Nephilim. Genesis 6 talks about this. And there were giants in those days. And these giants began to spread evil and wickedness and destruction even more so. And it got to the point where God himself relented repented, depending on what translation you read. He was sorrowful that he created man and he found Noah and his family that were righteous in the earth who did not partake of this evil, did not partake of this wickedness. And they were the only ones in the earth who still had a pure bloodline that he could start over with after the flood receded and they came out of the ark, they could repopulate the earth because their blood was not tainted. Now, that's the days of Noah. Now that, I, so we covered, I, again, I wanted to give you a little bit of that information on the first half of our broadcast now we're going to shift gears and we're going to i'm going to go into the second half of this broadcast and i'm going to show you uh, uh, an unbelievable headline Re really it shouldn't be if you know the times that we're in now this is uh several outlets reported this a i'm going to i'm not going to use this term because i want to use some wisdom here but i want to say an apostate cardinal calls for revision and Catholic teaching on homosexuality. According to a report from Reuters and other outlets, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this to you. I'm going to give you an excerpt. A prominent cardinal who leads a body re representing European bishops has called for a, quote, fundamental revision in Catholic teaching on homosexuality and quote said it is wrong to fire church work workers for being gay. The remarks by Luxembourg Cardinal Jean-Claude Holerick to the German Catholic news agency KNA were among the most direct calls ever by a Roman Catholic leader. Now, guys, listen, I am not ignorant. I, I completely understand the, the, the false teachings of the Catholic Church. So, I mean, we already got that. We, we know that, okay? But you know it's pretty bad when a, when a religious system that is already operating in error and apostasy and heresy, and I, don't get me started on that, because there's a lot of doctrines that are man-made, that is stemmed and been perpetrated out of the Catholic Church for years and years and years. I don't have time to spend an hour, 45 minutes, whatever, going into all that. But listen, you know it's bad when we get a report like this coming from this organization. So let me read on here. Again, I want to read this again. This was the most direct cause ever documented by a Roman Catholic leader for change in teaching on one of the most controversial issues in the church today. And I, again, the church today, and I'm... We're giving air quotes here. Holerick is president of the Pan-European Grouping of Catholic Bishops Conferences, known as C-O-M-E-C-E. -E. In the interview... 
This cardinal was asked for his assessment of a campaign in which about 125 Catholic church employees in Germany, including some priests, came out as LGBTQ and about the church's teaching on homosexuality. Quote, and I want to read to you what he said. Quote, I believe. Now, there's the first problem right there. It wasn't the Bible says. It wasn't the word of God defines. He said, quote, I believe. I believe that's important. He said, quote, I believe that the sociological scientific foundation of this teaching is no longer true. Again, I, you're going to I'm going to I'm going to bring this home today. It's his opinion that what the Bible has made black and white for thousands of years is no longer true, no longer relevant, no longer culturally acceptable. Thus, again, according to this cardinal, I believe this teaching is no longer true. And another, he went on to say, quote, I think it's time we make a fundamental revision of the doctrine. Hmm. Wow. Wait till I show you in the Bible where it warns about this very thing that would happen in the future. Traditionally, the Roman Catholic Church teaches that same-sex attraction is not a sin, but homosexual acts are. Let me say that again. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that same-sex attraction is not a sin, but, but the acts are. Holerich, who did not elaborate on what aspects of the teaching he felt needed revision, went on to say, quote, I also believe that we are thinking ahead in terms of doctrine. The way the Pope has expressed himself in the past can lead to a change in doctrine. In other words, he's basically telling you here that the Pope has kind of signaled that he's on board with this. Uh, Francis, Pope Francis has said that while the church cannot accept same-sex marriage, it can support civil union laws aimed at giving gay partners joint rights in areas of pensions, health care, and inheritance. He has sent notes of appreciation to priests and nuns who minister to gay Catholics and said parents of gay children should never condemn them. But under his watch, the Vatican has also said priests cannot bless same-sex couples. However, in December, a Vatican department raised conservative uh, attention when it apologized for, quote, causing pain to the entire LGBT community by removing from its website a link to resource material from a Catholic gay rights advocacy group in preparation for a Vatican meeting in 2023. It was later reposted. In his interview with KNA, the Holerick or this cardinal also said that gay church employees should not lose their jobs, something which has happened in some countries, particularly in the United States. Quote, they know they have a home in the church. Let me say that again. They know they have a home in the church with us. The Luxembourg Arch. Archdiocese. No one is dismissed because they are homosexual, according again to this cardinal in which he told K and A. Now, let me read this. The Apostle Paul wrote to he wrote here in, in 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 5. Listen what he wrote. He's writing again, he's writing to you have an older generation writing to another generation. Listen to what he says, quote, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, this is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead is appearing at his kingdom. Listen to what he says. Preach the word. 
Preach the what? The word. Now, why is that important? Notice this cardinal said, I believe. He didn't say the word says, the word declares, or the word of God declares. He left it completely out. And it was all about his belief, his opinion, and his stance. But here's what Paul said. Preach the word. Come on. Do I, any, do I got anybody listening today that still believes and preaches the word despite the culture, despite what's popular and what's not popular? Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. My Lord, do we need that today? We need preachers that convince, rebuke, and exhort with long suffering and teaching. Why? Because verse three, for the time will come and we're there when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, what did this cardinal just say? We need a revision to the doctrine. We need to change the doctrine to accommodate it to today's culture, today's society. What makes people happy today, despite whether or not the word says it, whether or not God says whatever, we need revision. It says the time will come when they will not endure. They will not tolerate. They will not heed. They will not hold to it. They will no longer endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, their own lust, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They're going to single out and handpick their own teachers. Teachers that it don't matter if they preach the word. It don't matter if they convince. It don't matter if they rebuke. They want hand-picked, cherry-picked teachers that are going to teach them what makes them feel good, what accommodates their lifestyles, what keeps them in their lust and their sins. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables, falsehoods. Oh, but I'm going to tell you, he says, but you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Come on, endure persecution. Endure ridicule. They're going to mock you. They're going to laugh you. They're going to try to cancel you. They're going to try to rebuke you. They're going to try to shut you down and shut you up because you preach the word of God that is unchangeable, that is, come on, that never fades away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot nor tittle of this word shall pass away till all things be fulfilled. You do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, the Spirit of God expressively says that in the latter times we're there. Some will depart from the faith. They will leave the core foundations of the gospel. They'll leave sound doctrine. They'll leave spirit-filled churches. They'll leave, come on, Bible-believing, doctrinally sound, truth-filled churches. And they will give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot, Iron, my friends, again, what are, what are we talking about today? We, we took, I took two headlines today that are hot topics that has been, that has been trending on our website that we've had discussions about on social media. And I'm showing you from a biblical perspective that these are more signs of the time of the end. These are signs of the coming of the Lord. Jesus said, as it were, in the days of Noah, 
and the days of Lot, so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. I just showed you two examples from the Bible, taking headlines from today and showing you in light of the Word of God why, come on, number one, that we're in the end times, and number two, why there is a necessity for, come on, for preachers and teachers and evangelists and men and women of God like you and like me and those that are listening that are, are, have not compromised. They've not thrown in the towel. They've, they're not lukewarm. They've not gone into apostasy. They don't have itching ears for teachers to teach them things that will gratify their flesh but they're desiring holiness. They're desiring sanctification. They're desiring righteousness. They're desiring to please God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. Come on. Do I got anybody out there today that's listening somewhere in podcast land, um, rumble and on YouTube today that you say, I am part of the remnant. I refuse to compromise. I refuse to bow down. I refuse. I will not be a reed shaken by the wind, but I will make my faith like flint and though all may come against me though come on the world behind me and the cross before me i will endure until the end come on amen so listen intimeheadlines.org intimeheadlines.com if again if you if you've enjoyed segments like this again we ask that don't forget to download our app. It's free on Apple. It's free on Android. Again, it's in the description on Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, right there in the description. Find the link where it says download our free app. Get it. Download it. Get it into your hands. If you enjoy segments like this, you enjoy messages, exhorting, edifying, correction, rebuke, information, all messages throughout the week. If, if our ministry is a continual source of blessing to you, all we ask you to do is pray about becoming a monthly partner why do we need to do this because again everything we do is free guys the the subscription base is free the podcast is free the app is free we we cover all that um and all we ask is if you want to help us remain strong and partner with us you can do that two different ways you can give electronically through the website or through the app two different ways you can do that uh, and, it, and we make it real easy for you to do that. Or you can give by check or money order and you can make that out to End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. As always, guys, we appreciate you taking the time out today to come on uh, and be a part of our, uh, our podcast segment today. We're going to sign off for today. We will be back on Wednesday and we'll bring you another uh, segment we're going to pray about what we're going to talk about on Wednesday, but we will be back, Lord willing, of course. Lord willing, we will be back to see you guys on Wednesday. We're going to pray a quick prayer over you and pray the Lord's blessing over you before we sign out today. Father, I pray for those that are watching today, listen today. I pray that you'd strengthen their, their faith, God. Lord, maybe there's someone watching today that's wavering. Someone's watching today that they're hurting and someone... Lord, that, that needs strengthen in their spirit, strengthen in their heart. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would touch them right now in this broadcast, that they would their faith would be strengthened. Lord God, their heart would uh, there would be peace that would come into their heart, that you would give them direction, give them guidance, give them counsel, give them wisdom. Lord, we ask that the angels of the Lord be with them today, protect them and keep them and they're coming in and they're going out forevermore. May you keep them from harm, danger, and disabling accidents. We ask that you'd bless them today, Lord, and their household, their marriage, their finances, their children, their business, their finances, their health, every part. May the, Lord, you said in 3 John 2, you will that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And we pray that over everyone listening under the sound of my voice today. And we declare it today in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Amen and amen. We will see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.